So today I'm going to take a look at this Polar HD1200 tandem axle trailer. I've never been so excited to get a trailer before because this is really unique. This is an off-road utility trailer uh, used for camping, hunting, and a lot of garden work and landscaping work around the property here. Uh, this is a great trailer for going off-road because it has four tires. You can see there's two over there. They all came wrapped up really nice. Uh, first impressions of this trailer are that these are really good four-ply tires. These things feel really solid. They're quite heavy. <clears throat> Everything else is really light. Came all packaged nicely in the box. Uh, this is really thick. This feels like about we had a pretty sturdy plastic wheelbarrow. I'd say this feels about four times the thickness of that. Now that wheelbarrow we put through a lot of work with heavy rock. It finally cracked after about four or five years. This thing feels pretty sturdy. So uh, this is what the exact unit is. You can get this unit a little bit bigger. This is uh, 15 cubic feet. The reason I got this one is because I'm going to be pulling it with the four-wheeler, the ATV a lot. I don't want to overload the ATV and wear out my suspension or my transmission. This trailer is also quite narrow. Um, I will do an actual full measurement of width once it's all put together, but it's looking like it is like they say it is uh, with the wheels. It's going to be about 46 and a half inches wide. If you're going on those 50 inch trails in Wyoming, Colorado, or any other state, uh, you have to be within 50 inches to fit through there. And you know, if I ever go on an elk hunt or something like that, you know, this is going to fit through fine with the ATV. So I will be putting it together, and later this summer, I'm going to be taking some footage of using this trailer. So by the time you see this video, uh, you're going to have a good idea of how it works, and I'll let you know how it goes for me. Be sure to subscribe and click the like button if this video is helpful. Comment below, let me know if you have ever tried one of these quad tire trailers. It has four tires, that's right. It doesn't bump up and down throwing all your gear out of the trailer, that's why I got this. So let me know what you think in the comments below or if you're going on any hunts this fall. First impression is that these parts feel very solid. They're very heavy. Uh, they feel like they're well built. So that's a good, good thing. When you're putting nuts on the bolts here, uh, always use Loctite Blue, the gel squeeze. Now you can use red, but only if you're almost absolutely sure you're never gonna have to take that apart. Um, if you're going to have to replace a tire or something like that, uh, use blue. It's strong enough. You got to use this stuff because uh, if you don't, the nuts will loosen off those bolts over time and your trailer will fall apart. This is what people use in automotive. Okay, So in your car, uh, they use this all over. But mostly blue. The red is really strong. Something I wasn't expecting with this trailer is uh, the axle parts come pre-greased. There's already quite a bit of grease in there. And I'm assuming there's some here, just a little bit where the, the tires are gonna go on these two things. Get that in focus. And this is where that rotates. That's This is gonna be connecting to the axle. So it's already got grease in it, that's nice. Because some of you probably don't have experience uh, working on automotive stuff. You're just trying to put together a garden trailer. So this is all set up to uh, make it really easy for you. Directions are really simple here. Uh, that's how it goes together, as you can see. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is a garden camp trailer. So the tires are only gonna be held on by a little pin just like a wheelbarrow um, might be putting something stronger through here but not necessary unless you're really going 
out in the bush in the back country maybe put something a little more heavy duty there i'll show you here later what that is to add to the grease already put in here uh, these actually come with a little zerk if you know what a zerk is uh, so you can just hook that up and keep them greased uh, to you know keep the trailer in good condition that's really nice i wasn't expecting a zerk on a hunting slash garden trailer at all Make sure this is on the outside so that you can air up your tire. Um, this is how they're supposed to go on. And these little pins are actually really sturdy. They're almost the same exact one that holds up a 200 pound steel gate on an ATV trailer I have that the ATV goes on that trailer. Be sure and grease this up. The directions do call for you to grease this once per year. Um, this all-purpose grease is super cheap. I will put a link down below where you can order some. I have learned the hard way that you want to grease all internal exposed metal parts. This metal's painted. It's protected. This is not. Um, these are the moving parts. I want to grease the inside of that. I want to grease the pin. I want to grease inside the tire. Um, some of you might say it's not necessary, but it's better safe than sorry. You're going to get a lot of dirt and mud and crud in there, and um, this grease will protect it for a long time and keep it running smoothly. I'll even grease this part. Rust is really bad. You don't want rust on any of your toys or your cars or anything metal. Once you get rust, um, that's when things really start to go downhill. So, an easy, cheap way that takes you just a couple minutes. This will save you thousands of dollars in the long run. Uh, that I can promise, promise you. So this part is a little bit more technical uh, to show you what's going on here. I did drop that down there, that piece. Um, <clears throat> I went ahead and laid this drop cloth plastic down on the plastic part of the trailer because um, these little holes in this frame here, this is hollow, but there are those holes. So what I did is I poured a little bit of motor oil in this piece here and I kind of sloshed it around in there really slowly um, to try to coat the inside because moisture will get in those frames and it can rust over time just to protect it a little longer just a little bit of motor oil though I was really careful not to get it on my threads uh, because I'm going to use that thread lock I'm, I will be using red the really strong thread lock on these and then my drill to tighten this up. I just didn't want to get any oil or grease on the plastic because uh, I'm gonna paint a primer and then an undercoating, rubber undercoating, just like you would undercoat the underside of your pickup truck. Uh, because this is really thick plastic, but as you can see on my wheelbarrow, it does get scratched up and cracked, especially if you're doing a lot of off-road driving with your ATV pulling this trailer. I uh, just want to protect that. So uh, this little piece fits in here like this. It does have to freely rotate because uh, you're, then you can be able to dump your trailer. Um, so these are all going to be tightened up now with the thread lock. Don't forget the thread lock. <clears throat> and uh, these face towards the rear, obviously, the red. The back side of the trailer is uh, the curved side because when you dump it that curved side lays down on the ground and you can just move your rock and dirt out of the trailer so this is the red thread lock see right there it says red red gel
Okay, one really cool thing about these threads and these nuts, see that, how it's square here on the head? Well, this is square too, so. That makes it way easier when using your wrench or your drill or impact driver to tighten the other end on. Um, that's a really nice feature here. Really well built trailer so far. It's actually one of the easiest things I've ever put together in my life, I gotta say. And I'm really not just talking up the trailer because I wanna sell a trailer or anything like that. Um, I don't even know if I can do that really because it's a pretty big item. But um, it, so far it's really awesome. So um, really user friendly. So let's keep watching here. Um, I'm not gonna film all these nuts and bolts going together, but you can kind of see how it works now. So I actually did find something I don't like about this trailer. I don't like how this bolt comes through like that. I had to put the head down here because there's no room with the plastic. Um, so this is just something that can catch on rocks or stumps. Um, it'll, if you hit something really, like just something going too fast, you hit it wrong, there's a very small chance that you could really hit that bolt hard and weaken this. Um, I personally would rather have this welded together. I might weld it together if I get a welder here or someone that knows how to weld. Um, but that's what I have to say about that. Maybe this too, uh, this is a really tough lever here. That spring seems pretty heavy duty. I'll be greasing that once I'm done undercoating. But uh, I probably will find some other way, an extra support to hold this together. But more on that later. Um, it's kind of hard to explain the way it's set up right now. I did forget one crucial step here. I knew I'd forget something. Forgot to put the washers on. So I have to come back in here and put washers on all the tires. Washers on the outside too. Even washers uh, where the this whole tire assembly connects. You can see right there, the little washers. So I will go back and do that. I don't need to film it. Um, I'm just going to try to get it done fast. So before proceeding here, um, I'm going to answer probably the biggest question for some of you elk hunters out there that are hunting in Colorado or Wyoming. If you're trying to go on those 50 inch trails, um, is this trailer actually under 50 inches? Uh, let's find out. So this may be a deal breaker to some of you. I'll show you where I have the tape. This is just barely over 50 inches. It is 51 inches. You can see the 51 right here. Just a hair over. So 50 would be right here. So you have maybe an inch and a quarter past that 50 inch mark. Um, I suppose you could uh, maybe take out some of those washers that would probably give you a quarter inch but it wouldn't get you there yet so uh sorry everyone who was really excited about that um you could easily well yeah that's gonna be a tough one 
So I did take a risk buying this. I hoped it was under 50 inches wide, uh, but it's not with those wheels. Not what I can see here unless the tape's off. It looks like I'm not off though. So um, you could maybe try to squeak it through those trails, but um, I don't know if you'd get through. Some of them are barricaded off. So anyway, I'll continue on with this uh, video series. Uh, let's get the trailer finished up and then uh, I'll get to uh, how it actually works out. out. So except for a few bolts um, actually to put in the trailer, it was really easy lining up those holes. So putting this thing together overall was really easy. I just went the extra step by greasing up everything and oiling up the inside of the frame. Let's see what the clearance actually is. Um, I'm not gonna count that little nut and bolt there. I might just saw that off. So you can see there about 12 inches of clearance um in the middle that's awesome that that's a lot of clearance over here you have a little less but you know if there's rocks in this area your tires are most likely going to be up on those rocks or a log you could catch a rock in here but you know it's probably going to catch here too i think if you just go really slow if you're in some gnarly areas with a lot of rocks you know you should be fine I mean, this is still, that's still more clearance than a lot of uh, pickup trucks have, so. Or a Subaru, I, I don't, I think a Subaru is only like, I don't know, eight inches. This is, that's about a good eight inches, you know, probably about the same, maybe a little more. Um, yeah, so, looks like a great off-road trailer. Really, really disappointed that those tires are just over 50 inches. Maybe you could squeak those through though. Or you could tilt the trailer up a little bit as you go through a barricade. That'd probably work, but uh, I don't know if you'd get a ticket. This isn't really a vehicle, it's just a trailer, so uh, it's hard to say. So let's continue. I'm going to get these bolts put in. I don't need to show you. Uh, I am going to use thread lock. I'm going to use red thread lock. I don't think this is ever going to come off because I'm going to protect it with a rubberized undercoating uh, Rust-Oleum. I tried it on my pickup truck and I actually hit some huge boulders <laughs> with it going pretty fast. Probably screwed up my suspension and frame, but uh, the, the undercoating that I'll be putting on this, uh, it's really, really strong. It does not flake off. I'm going to finish this up now and put it away until I get my primer and undercoating. Another quick side note, um, I don't need one here in the middle, but I do need, uh, for these nuts and bolts here, I do need these square washers. So I'm trying not to forget that last time I forgot to put on the washers. Had to redo it, so... Just something to think about. I did find one uh, huge flaw here that has to be from the factory. Um, the, luckily, these are more important. I think these holes down here are lining up great, but uh, these top holes, and there's one over there, um, the, the hole that they're supposed to match up with is actually right here. So now I have to drill through the plastic, which I'd rather not do. Um, I can show you down here, they do line up just great. Yeah, see these holes line up good. The two that already have the nuts and bolts in up front line up great, but uh, yeah, gonna have to come under here and drill that. So a little disappointed. I. I don't like it when you buy something expensive and there's factory flaws that are that obvious, so um, I'd expect better from them. Also in the directions, it did tell me to put the washer on the top side. I, uh, I'm not going to redo those, but for uh, these I am going to put the washer on the bottom. Um, it just fits better that way. I don't know why they want the washer on top, but it doesn't make sense to me. It's up to you what you want to do. 
that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to put the washer on the bottom because uh, I don't know that. That just doesn't look right to me. That looks like it needs a washer. I went ahead and got a bit that was just a hair smaller than that thread. I want it to fit really tight because, you know, it's already going to be weaker since it's got a bigger hole next to it. So this should work out well. So if one good thing did come out of this, I can actually see um, how thick this plastic is. I know it's hard to tell, but um, I'd say it's definitely about a quarter inch thick. That's pretty good. That's thicker than your average wheelbarrow that's plastic, so now I know. It's good stuff. And there it is. Um, the lever down there, really easy to use. It does rattle a little bit. Every single trailer I've had like this rattles at some point or another. Um, I could probably fix that pretty easy. So really easy for getting stuff out, dirt, rock. I think I'm gonna cut out a sheet of linoleum that fits right in there snug and maybe just uh, crazy glue it so then I could peel it off when I want. Um, I like that, that's nice. But I uh, get kind of annoyed because uh, dirt and stuff gets caught in there. That's why I might put the linoleum down. So now time to get a hitch receiver on and right, get a hitch on and uh, try it out. I had some leftover hard linoleum sheets, so I decided to cut out a piece to put in the bottom of the trailer just to help protect it when I'm throwing heavy rocks in there. I also undercoated the trailer, and I know this is definitely overkill, um, but I've used this stuff on my pickup truck and with that primer too, and it, it has held up just amazing. Um, I've taken my pickup down some really rough roads and hit boulders with the steel underneath. Um, this stuff really protects it. So if I can prevent rust, I'm gonna do that in any way possible. Um, whether it's greasing up the moving parts or priming and undercoating the underside. Um, that's really important to do, you know, if you want the trailer to last 20 years instead of five years.